What up all my Undisputed Reptile people? That's right, we have a brand change. If you guys haven't noticed it, you'll be noticing it from here on forward. Ahani Exotics and V Reptiles have now fully merged, 100% merged. We are now Undisputed Reptiles. Can I get a whoop word? All right, guys. And an announcement of that, we're actually going to be starting a series, which is the top five best starting snakes that you can possibly get. What's up, Undisputed Reptiles? Welcome back to another fun-filled educational video. All right, so, run it. Really. All right, cool. The most sexiest king snakes, in my honest opinion, back here in the East. I'm going to actually get to the new additions. You know, we've got really parasite flush, and we've got really fresh snakes. We're talking about this. Nice big female also took, man. Now, isn't that freaking awesome? All right, so now that we're done peening, and breeding the species is 100% the easiest part. I'm going to pee. Oh, that's a big And in order to do that, we're actually going to have to go all the way to the other reptile room. So let's go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I like. We need to actually start in this room. I forgot about it. So we're going to be working in order from five to one. So the fifth snake on the list, which I believe is the last of the best, but the fifth best snake to start with is actually this little guy right over here. All right. So this dude's actually not really cooperating too much, um, but he's over here. He's a ball python. Sorry for shaking you guys around on the camera. He's a ball python. He's my only ball python that I have at the moment. His name's Centurion. He's a 26 year old top G. Come boy. Come boy. Probably see if we can get him out now. Now, ball pythons are fifth on my list for quite a few reasons. One, they hardly ever strike. Now, granted, there are a few genetics out there who seem to have a worse attitude than others, but just stand in normal form. You know, I really don't have any aggression in this guy. I mean, he's 26 year old. This guy has converted so many people into loving reptiles. And another thing, we're finally past that they can only survive in racks, right? So check it this out. This is a one meter. Deep by one meter wide by 300 high enclosure. He's got no belly heat. He's only got top heat coming there from the back. Now this probe, I did move a little away and I spread it with water so that you guys can actually see where the hot spot's coming from. And this is how I have him set up. So now the ball pythons are officially no longer deemed as only able to survive in racks. It is so cool to keep them because you can give them enclosures just like this. Now granted, you do need a lot of hiding spaces. So he's got a hiding space there at the back where he can chill in under. And then of course he's got the side pocket where he can chill in under there. Now this guy's 26 years old guys. So, I mean, firstly they're long lived, which makes them amazing pets. Now I would say the only drawback to ball pythons is the fact that they go on food strikes. Now an experienced keeper will tell you that that's not an issue because they can go off food for quite some time. Like he, for example, he'll just randomly go off food for six months. And then you're like kind of sitting there starting to panic and then you weigh him and then you see he's lost like 10 grams, which is absolutely nothing for a ball python. So once you really understand, oh, look how dirty my hand is. Once you really understand how, how it works in regards to their food strikes and things like that, they're absolutely nothing to sweat about. All right, so since he's not coming out at all, I'm gonna come closer while we talk about hatchling ball pythons. Now that's another reason why I've got these guys in number five, because hatchling ball pythons can actually be, be quite difficult to establish, uh, with some requiring quite a few tricks of the trade, but in general, the babies aren't too difficult to establish and they really take well to live mice or live rats. And obviously if they don't want any of those two, you can just try Maltese, and Maltese almost always an absolute guaranteed win with these guys. But all right, enough on the ball pythons, a final look at the type of enclosures these guys enjoy, and on to the next snakes, which would be number four. All right, moving on to number four. Number four on my list would be American rat snake species. Now, I am specifically talking about American rat snake species because they, in general, aren't that bad. For this video, the example I'm going to be using is the Texas rat snake. So I'm going to be showing you guys a few Texas rat snakes, which is firstly this beautiful blue-eyed leucistic Texas rat snake. Now these guys, as you can see, tame down phenomenally, phenomenally well. This is a three-year-old girl. She'll actually be able to breed this year. So we're pretty excited for this. And uh, guys, I just want to reiterate, you know, this is not a care video. Uh, this is a top five list. So the care videos will be, will be coming after this. We have been putting some thought into some content coming forward. And... We decided that this top five list is going to be one of them. And then from that top five list, we'll be doing a care video on each of these so that you guys who are interested in getting your first snake knows what the top five recommendations are and from there, how to care for those top five, for those top five animals. So why do I have these guys at number four? Well, the reason being is because they get quite big. 
Now, there is a little effort to taming them down because babies can be a little bit attitude although their bites are absolutely nothing to consider painful. Once you get them to an adulthood size, they're fairly easy to manage. The only difficult part, I would say, is to get them out of the tub or enclosure. After they're out, they're incredibly docile by nature. I mean, just look at this absolute beaut of a male. Now, they also get, like I mentioned, really, really, really big. I mean, for a colubrid, this guy is giant. Now, yes, he's not like the Asian rat snake species. Those guys get tremendous. But then again, they still this is still a really decent size. Now, why am I recommending these guys above Asian rat snake species? Asian rat snakes get ginormous, firstly. These guys, in general, aren't really too scary to work with. They chill down very easily, like I said, and they stay a very manageable size. This, in fact, is a proven breed of female. Last year was her first season. She gave us a good, decent size. Clutch, unfortunately, a lot of the eggs were infertile, so you've only got one baby left, which I will show you guys as well. But look at that. I mean, that is a very easily manageable snake, and her enclosures are really, really easy to do as well. Let me get her in here, then I'll show you guys the setup. So, <laughs> I keep all my clippers in racks, and this is essentially the setup, right? So, a nice hide, nice humid hide if they need to hide away from the cold in it. Oh, well, not from the cold, if they need to get a little bit humidity up, and then enough space for them to cruise around and a nice clean water ball in the corners that I just drew into the enclosures. All right, and we're back all the way on the other side of the facility. So let's take a look at what a Texas rat snake baby looks like. Now, these guys are also, like I said, very, very manageable when they're small. Look at that. This is a tiny little baby. He's only had about five meals. They go through a heavy octodermic color change. Looking like corn snakes when they're young and looking like those beautiful specimens you guys saw there at the back. Now, as far as the babies go, this is how I keep all of my very much hatchling babies. Look at that tail. Kind of threat displaying there saying, hey, let me alone. So this is how I keep all my baby colubridae in a small little tub like this. He's got quite a bit of moss in here because he was very shy. After adding all this moss, he started eating like an absolute beast. All right. And then number three, the Samboas. This is a beautiful albino sand boa i would say the mullet sand boas are just as good as a snake these guys hardly ever bite when they do it's absolutely minuscule and they stay a super manageable size this here is a yearling so unfortunately i don't have any adults but i do have a few of these that i can show you guys here is an example of a wild type so this is what they generally look like now this guy if memory serves is a double head anery snow. Well, well, he's a head snow because he's double head anery and albino. So he's a snowmaker, which is absolutely cool. And again, this is a yearling male. So they really don't grow too fast. And then to show you guys how easy housing them is, here's our snow female. Now she is really, really pretty. And I love, 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 love the ways these guys look. I mean, just look at that. So this is essentially how I keep them. Uh, water bowl that I let naturally drain. So this one's about the space to get full. Remember, they are an arid species, so they don't need humidity. So I got them full of sand, vents all around, and then, like I said, I let the water bowls dry out by themselves. And once the water bowls have dried out, I just simply put the water bowl back in there. And then that's it, guys. And then weekly feedings. Super easy. All right, then number two on the list is going to be California king snakes. Now, I'm specifically referring to California king snakes. Because they, in general, docile out so amazing. I mean, look at this. This animal is absolutely amazing. Now, she's one of our breeder girls. She's what you'd call a banana stripe. Now, what makes these guys so interesting? Well, to be honest, there's a lot of genetic diversity in them. It's more so locality type specific. But here where we are at, we got no true localities. I mean, these are all imported decades ago. And from there, it's just been breeding back and forth. And we don't have any true localities. So California king snakes, definitely 10 out of 10 recommend. Babies establish super easy. Babies hatch relatively big. And there's no issue getting them onto throw frozen thought. And again, they stay a super, super manageable size. This is what I would consider to be a really big breeder male. And he's barely a dot. I mean, if you look at him, he is actually super, super small. Now, I am moving my hands a lot because the one thing with king snakes is they do eat other snakes. So we've been working with quite a few snakes that are already showing you guys back and forth. So I just don't want him to mistake my fingers for a potential other snake, which I would say is a big drawback of them is that they eat other snakes. Breeding can be a little bit intimidating, but in general, you don't really lose a male to a female. You just need to observe. But just look at this. Look at this. Mm. Absolutely beautiful. All right, now that we're done with number two, I think this is one that all of you could have guessed. It is 
corn snakes. That's right, guys. Corn snakes, I do believe, are the best starting snake. Um, I started with milk snakes. Horrible choice. They're so squirmy. Uh, corn snakes, definitely 10 out of 10 recommend to start with. And I'm going to start it off with this beautiful pinstripe ghost motley female. Now, she's also one of our proven breeders. Last year was her first time, so we're quite excited to see what we're going to do with her this year. She is definitely one amazing looking animal. Now, corn snakes is a 10 out of 10 recommend for me for a first time snake because they are incredibly docile and there is so much diversity with them. This is a ghost motley, but I mean, look at this female. She is absolutely gorgeous. Now, she is quite big. I mean, this is quite extreme for a corn snake. I'd assume she's quite old, touching base at six to seven years, which is still young for corn snakes because they are quite long lived as well, especially with the correct care. But just look at this female. Absolutely beautiful. Another big reason why I would say corn snakes are the best star snake because this would be considered big. And if you look at this, this is actually quite a manageable size for every type of keeper. Now, there's not only diversity with the genetics, but there's also diversity between the normals. I mean, look at the extreme differences between these two, which make this to me such an incredibly appealing species to work with because there's so much you can do with it, right? I mean, everyone out there breeding ball pythons and thinking the genetic diversity is crazy there, but everyone seems to forget about how incredible these corn snakes are. I mean, look at these snakes. They are beautiful for wild types i mean damn man i mean seriously seriously how is that not something that's pretty hot damn all right guys and then i'm going to be ending this video off showing you guys this beautiful amelianistic female corn snake saying to you guys from undisputed reptiles you guys know we appreciate you you guys know we love you guys tell me if this video was efficient for you guys and let me know how keen you are about that care sheet video moving forward for every single one of these starter snakes. Thanks. 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 Thanks.